we've spotted the kimono style dress. We've been discussing it already this today. Is as kimono as it gets. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely to see you, Tamara. Thank you for we, me. we got a little taster there. Um, what's it like to open up? your home and to have cameras just following every single move. It was definitely a big decision and something that Jay and I talked about a lot. Um, but looking back on the show that we did when um, our daughter was like three uh, months old. Yes, yeah, so it was did, like seven days with, It was seven it? days. So. It was like a one hour like special. And we watch it back and it's the most amazing memories of her and she's changed so much. And like, it's just like the nicest ever, like fanciest home video. So we just thought, you know what? Like we're in such a happy place. She's an amazing little girl and there's nothing in our lives that we want to hide. And we were very open about letting people in and seeing every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So it was a big decision and obviously like having a toddler in front of the camera, you know, you have to think about it, but she is, she loved the process. She was the star of the show. So Tamara, I think I want in my next life, I want to come back as Sophia. So do I. <laughs> my goodness me, even just her reaction there, obviously she has very beautiful things and she's blessed with those things. What was it like to have her take the center stage within this, this program? She absolutely loved it. When she's older, do you think she might look back and say, mommy, why did you, show all that stuff about me because this is this is something Stacey and I have disagreed over <laughs> yeah. which is sharing your child when they're very young so much on social media yeah and uh, I think someone's given me a statistic that by the time a child is five now there'll be 1500 images of them on social media and this way is more a, of Fifi <laughs> yeah way more of your uh, darling daughter but do you think that these children, when they, you know, this generation of tiny children that are being shared like that, when they get to their 20s and 30s, they'll turn on you and say, why did you do it? You this, took away my privacy. I mean, she'll probably look back at pictures and be like, why did you cut my hair like that? And why did you dress me like that? Yeah. So that, you know, like, I feel that I've made the right decision for her, but when she's old enough to make her own decisions, then I will 100% never push her to do anything she doesn't want to do. And I was very conscious that if she was a child that was shy and reclusive and wouldn't enjoy the experience, I would never have put her in that situation. But she's so mature for her age and I'm so proud of her. So I didn't see any downside to it. But when she's like 10 or in 11 and she's like, I don't want to do this, mummy, then I will totally, totally, of course, like I will do whatever she wants and respect her. But I'm so proud of her that you can't help but kind of share. Sure, I don't well, know. She's well, that's yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. I do it with my grandchildren. You do it with your children as well. The same as you would if you had a photo album and people came around, you'd say, look, this is a memory. This is what we did. This is I have like first. photos all over my house of like when she was born, when I was pregnant, her first birthday. And I love photos. I love memories. And now all the photos, like forget me and Jay, they're all of Sophia. Like literally our whole house is a shrine to her. Since having her, like everything's changed. Is what just... we see with Sophia in this documentary, is that what your life was like growing up? No, I have to say like I had a really amazing life obviously and I came from like a very loving, like happy home. But I would say that Sophia's life is a little bit different. My parents were probably I know if you're listening, Mum and Dad, yes, you probably were a lot more down Your to earth than I was. Your mum did the housework, didn't she? Yes. <laughs> and no, when she... so I, I think that's one of the most amazing things about your mother, that I read that she, you know, no matter how much money your dad made, your mum did the housework. She did. She did all the school runs, all the housework, yeah. all the cooking, all the cleaning. Do she you was... do that? I mean, I cook breakfast. I make, like, <laughs> the best bacon sandwich ever, but I don't cook all the meals, but I always take, like, her to nursery and pick her up and do her homework with her and dress her bath. Like, I don't have any help with her but like I don't clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> I love cleaning the house, but uh, I've seen that you've got security guards with you. So do you worry about yours and Sophia's safety? Yeah. Since having Sophia, like it is something that I think about a lot more. And since having her, I say that I do get like anxiety about situations that I never got before she was born because she's like the most important thing in my life. And to think of her ever being in harm's way, if there's anything I can do to stop that, then having security around all the time is a small price to pay because it's just peace of mind. And you've got 50 staff. Can you tell me what the 50 staff do? <laughs> um, we don't have, okay, so 50 is like a small exaggeration. That's from like when I get my hair done to a hairdresser coming in or like a nail person. We don't have 50 staff that work in the house because well, that I'm would be crazy. Then. No. <laughs> Look, we ha it's a big house and I do have a lot of people helping me. Yeah. And I realise that seems maybe a little bit strange. Do they live there? there? No, no one lives there. What do you do with all those rooms? I mean, I think they've like counted like broom cupboards and stuff as well, because there are definitely not Is that many rooms. Is the broom cupboard as big as my bedroom? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know, how big's your bedroom? <laughs> There's a number of staff per room, basically, isn't there so? <laughs> um, listen, I know it might seem extreme to some people, but at the same time, like, kind of is 
my normality and I would never judge anyone else for like the way they choose to mm. live their life and what they do so well, clearly um, family is is very important to mm -hmm. you Tamara and, and that comes across actually in this documentary as it did in the seven day thing which I did watch oh, thank you. Um, so I, I have to just ask you how Petra's doing because unfortunately I know her, her life whether she wanted it or not was sadly in the newspapers not that terribly long ago going through a rather sort of semi-public divorce is she on the mend is she doing well I think it's really unfortunate because my sister's such a private person and she did it she's the complete opposite to me mm. she would never do a show like this and she always like shields her kids and she's very shy and very reserved so it was sad to see her having to go mm. through something so publicly when she would have wanted it to be private so out of respect for her kids because they're going to watch this one day I really wouldn't want to comment on that situation but like she's my sister and I will always always be loyal and so fiercely protective of her Absolutely. and her happiness is like literally everything to me yeah yeah exactly and it, and it looks like a new chapter starting for her anyway so that's obviously a great thing and um, I have to talk about Christmas with you as well because I walk my dog in the park not terribly oh. far from her house and I just go to nosy if I'm being honest since having Fifi Christmas is the best thing ever <laughs> like having a kid at Christmas is the most magical thing like she is so innocent she believes in Santa she believes like in Rudolph she believes in like all the magic of Christmas and getting to like experience that now is so, so, so Can amazing. Can people get to your house? I mean, no. Well, <laughs> oh, you're going to have like a kid's party. We always have like all her cousins come around and friends from her nursery. And I really love to like mm -hmm. entertain and like have a busy house and just have people coming and going whenever they want. And I think that's so nice. Like she has three cousins and they see each other every day. And it's like so nice for her to interact with kids of her own age as well. And to share like, all these amazing memories with. I heard you're a great haggler, which is a girl after <laughs> my own heart. Doesn't matter how much you've got, you will still haggle your way. <laughs> I learned down. that from my dad. <laughs> he like literally, I will never ever forget, like when I was like 11, I really wanted this bomber jacket and I took my dad to the shop and I was begging him for this jacket. I was like, please, please, I want to wear this. And he was like negotiating in the shop and like literally like haggling. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not in the market. We're like in a real <laughs> shop, just pay for the jacket, let's go. But like now I really appreciate that like, if you don't ask, you don't get. And it's worth like trying to, why would you not want to get a discount? It doesn't yeah. matter like well, how much money yeah. you have. It has clearly served him well. <laughs> it has, exactly. exactly. Well, it's on tonight, nine o'clock, ITVB. We love being nosy. So we'll undoubtedly be watching. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so Tomorrow. much nice for having me. Thank you.